If you guys want to live this nomadic lifestyle, sand around the world, or just want to upgrade your solar panels and lithium batteries, then this video is for you guys. We're going to show you exactly how to take control of your own energy for living off grid so you can start building your own solar setup today. Well, you guys need to work out exactly how much energy you're going to use. You can do this online using Renergy's calculator from their website, but for us, this part was easy as we've been living on board for three years already. When we started, our solar system was as follows. 540 amps of lead acid batteries, 600 watt inverter, 30 amp battery charger, 80 amp alternator on our engine, no solar panels, and a five kilowatt generator. Before setting off on our journey around the world, we installed 640 watts of Renergy solar panels on our Bimni. These worked great, giving us about 200 amp hours of charge on average per day. But charging lead acid batteries is difficult and a long process. Basically, you have a three stage charging cycle. Bulk charge, which slowly charges them up to about 80, 90%. Absorption mode, which takes hours to get to that last 10%. Then float mode, which is basically just as they're fully charged, it just keeps trickling in. To live off grid comfortably, there's just not enough hours in the day to fully charge our batteries to get that like last 10, 20% charge, unless we had about 1200 watts of solar. So this is when lithium iron phosphate batteries really come in handy. We have 400 amp hours of Renergy Smart lithium iron phosphate batteries. You might be thinking, why do we only get 400 amp hours of battery power when we had 540 of lead acid? Well, lead acid and or AGM batteries should always be kept as full as possible, never going below 50% or even higher. So what should last five years? Only has lasted us about two years as a liveaboard. So this means our 540 amp hours of lead acid batteries that we had only gave us 270 amp hours of usable battery storage. Our new 400 amp hours of lithium batteries can be drawn right down to about 10% comfortably, giving us 360 amp hours of usable power. And to top it off, we can charge them extremely quickly up to about 200 amps per hour. So we don't need to do any of this trickle charging anymore. With the built-in BMS, the batteries all talk to each other as well to safely charge and discharge while monitoring temperatures of each cell, giving me real-time overall monitoring rather than the guesswork we had with lead acid and AGM batteries. With these batteries, we have the power and storage to run all our appliances, induction cooktop, kettle, wash machine, microwave, charge all our camera equipment, laptop, fridge freezers, navigation. Actually, hang on. Some of these things aren't even 12 volt, they're 220 volt, which brings us to the next piece of the puzzle here. We have a fantastic inverter, which allows us to run 220 volt appliances straight from our 12 volt lithium batteries. We have the Renji 3000 watt inverter charger. Not only does this convert 12 volt DC power for our batteries to AC power on our boat, but when connected to shore or our generator, we also charge our batteries up to 80 amps per hour when we need it. But to be honest with you guys, we predominantly get all our charge from our 640 watts of solar panels up on our Bimini. We produce on average 2.2 kilowatts of electricity per day. That means we've reduced over 2,500 kilowatts of electricity from the sun on our journey so far. To convert the sun's energy to charge our lithium batteries, we need what's called an MPPT solar charge controller. Oh, that's a good stuff. <laughs> now we have two of these Renergy 40 amp charge controllers. With the maximum amount of solar panels between the two charge controllers, we could potentially charge up to 80 amps per hour from the sun. But right now, we charge at about 40 amps per hour between all our solar. Don't worry guys, I'll put all these links in the description below. But don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video. So once you know your energy needs from the Renergy's website and what these items are, it's time to start installing. There's still a couple more things that we need to complete this setup. But luckily, Renergy has completely simplified the whole process and I'm gonna show you how we set up our system. And once you're done watching this, you'll have a much better idea how your boat system works and how you guys can easily upgrade your boat to live completely off-grid and be more self-sufficient. Find a suitable place to install your lithium batteries. We made a base to strap them in and put them under the floor in a bilge that never gets wet. Keep in mind, you wanna make sure they're in a sufficient spot to run all your cables to the shortest distance possible with adequate airflow. Because things can heat up and these cables are quite thick. We use three alt gauge cables because our runs are all under one meter. We made all our battery cables the exact same length and installed 100 amp battery fuses on each terminal of the batteries using these terminal fuse blocks. Next, we need to run a cable to the battery isolation switches on our boat. 
Although these smart batteries are actually turned off through the BMS, please make sure all the battery isolation switches are off when doing this work, as you still don't want to have any unexpected shock. Alright, step three guys. Next, I installed the 3000 watt Renergy inverter charger. I placed it as close as possible to the batteries in its own well ventilated area. I simply connected the positive and negative cables using 3 aught cable, making sure I installed a 300 amp fuse on the positive cable. I used 3 aught cables because they're only about 6 inches long. The inverter has a remote switch to turn it on and off. This is simply just to plug it in and Bob's your uncle. Now, as the inverter charger converts DC power to AC and vice versa, let's just stand the whole DC side of this install right now and I'll go through all the AC connections later. Let's now talk about solar panels. I have four times 160 amp Renergy solar panels, which are now coming up to four years old. I connected them in pairs in parallel by having the positive and negatives connected together. I used some proper six millimeter solar power cable with a thick durable cover to run them back to the charge controllers. For the length my cables are, this gives me a maximum of 30 amps of current I can safely run through these cables. So I use 30 amp isolation switches between the panels and the charge controllers. From there I connect them to a large distribution block with 30 amp fuses to lithium batteries. It's as simple as that. I installed them this way because I only want my solar panels charging my lithium house batteries. So now I also need to charge my bow thruster batteries and my engine start battery. For this, we're mainly just gonna be using the alternator on our engine, but we need to keep the lithium house batteries separated from the other batteries. We can do this by using the Renergy DC to DC charge controller, which is also easy to install. But you're gonna to need to do some research on your boat to see how it's all wired up, because you're gonna have these things called battery isolators. Basically, these battery isolators allow power to enter into them and will charge any batteries connected, but keep it separate. This means you can have all your AGM, lead acid, and lithium batteries connected together through the battery isolators, but they still get charged together. I hope that makes sense. So let's get started with the 50 amp DC to DC battery charger. Keep in mind all the negative cables in this system, run straight back to the negative isolation switch. So whether the AGM, lead acid or lithium, the negative cables don't matter. First, we disconnected the lithium house batteries completely from the battery isolator. We kept the positive charge cable from the engine alternator, bow thruster batteries and the engine start battery connected to the isolator. This way, the alternator will charge both our bow thruster batteries and engine start battery. We also kept our old battery charger to only charge the bow thruster and engine battery as a backup. We want to connect the new lithium house batteries to also charge from the alternator. So we just simply connected the engine start battery to the lithium house batteries through the 50 amp DC to DC charger with some fuses in between. And that's it. So the reason we can't connect our lithium house batteries directly to the battery isolator is because these lithium ones will take the maximum charge they can take continuously and that will just burn out our alternator. So we need to limit this charge. That's why we have this 50 amp DC to DC charger so we can limit the charge from anywhere up to 50 amps continuous. So now we've got the battery sorted, the solar panels, and the DC DC charger. Let's run back to our 3000 watt inverter charger and we'll talk about the AC side of that. We have 220 volt AC circuits on our boat, which is already set up with shore power and our 5.5 kilowatt generator. So all we need to do now is run the 220 volt circuit down from our switchboard to the input of the inverter charger. And as for the outputs, I simply ran a whole new circuit through a different switchboard connected to a few isolated power points throughout the boat for our inverter. Originally, I was just gonna tap into a whole 220 volt circuit on the boat, so every power point worked with the inverter. Because the Renergy inverter charger has a bypass mode. So if it senses shore power or generator power, it will just turn off the inverting mode on the inverter and let the power run straight through it directly to the power points. I personally want to keep the boat circuit completely isolated and separate, so I have the option to keep the inverter charger off while I run the generator or connect the shore power so we can use as much power through the whole boat rather than be limited to 3000 watts. So what's next? Well, Renergy Cell, a communication hub. This hub connects all your equipment together using a communication cable. This is extremely easy to connect. You simply connect everything to the communication hub, then connect a Bluetooth module, so you can view everything from your Renergy app on your phone or iPad. Now they've just released the Renergy One, which is an all-in-one battery monitoring system display. And we'll definitely get this soon. On our system, we have to buy separate Bluetooth modules for the solar charge controllers that we picked. But if you buy the 60 amp MPP controller or anything from the Elite range, you can use 
the one Bluetooth module for all the equipment just by simply connecting it to the communication hub. So now you have everything connected up completely. You can switch the batteries on by connecting them all together with the communication cables and then use the blue switch that comes with them to simply plug this in, press play and your batteries will all switch on and the BMS built into the batteries will communicate with everything in the system safely charging and discharging accordingly ready for your off-road adventure. <laughs> your off-grid adventure. <laughs> so be sure to jump on all the links below, jump on the Ranger website and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow our journey Sailing Sunday all on YouTube.